Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Mikey. You guys are rocking with me on Mikey's Intellectual Corner. On today's episode, we're going to be doing a science reaction. It's going to be a curse video and it's going to be how the immune system actually works. With that being said, let's just going to get right into it. The human immune system is the most complex biological system we know after the human brain and yet, most of us never learn how it works, or what it is. Your immune system consists of hundreds of tiny and two large organs. It has its own transport network spread throughout your body. Every day, it makes hundreds of billions of fresh cells organized like an army, with soldiers, captains, intelligence officers, heavy weapons, and crazy suicide. It's crazy how much is really into our immune system because I'm pretty sure when a lot of people just think of their immune system, it just they just think of like white blood cells or something like that. Because I know that's what I think of whenever I think it. I don't really think you know that deeply into it. I don't really think like you know what I'm saying or ever thought to um, you know research it or go into it like that. I guess. Defense officers, heavy weapons, and crazy suicide bombers. It's not some sort of abstract entity. Your immune system is you. Your biology protecting you from the billions of microorganisms that want to consume you and from your own perverted cells that turn into cancer. It's so manifold that it's impossible to cover in one video, so we'll make a series looking at different aspects of it. So if anything, this was really about to teach us just how amazing our body really is, if anything, you know what I'm saying? All right, let's get back into it. Different aspects of it. Today, what happens when your body is invaded and your first lines of defenses are engaged in a fight for life and death? It's been a normal day when suddenly the world explodes and an asteroid rips the sky open. Countless alien life forms invade ready to destroy cities and infrastructure and eat civilians. Or this is what you're saying. So it's like an alien invasion, but kind of like on an Osmosis Jones type of level, I guess you can say. Civilians. Or this is what your cells experience. You look at your bleeding thumb that you just cut on a dirty twig in the park. How annoying. But inside the wound, a horrible catastrophe has happened. There are dead cells and blood and dirt everywhere. Even worse, countless bacteria invade the warm caverns between your helpless cells to explore their new home, steal your resources, and poop everywhere. Kind of gross too, because if you think about it, there might be more than just bacteria and, and stuff like that living in us, pooping in us and stuff like that. That's kind of gross to think about. I, mean, uh, I like to not think about that. Just like I don't like to think there are living, living things in yogurt and stuff like that. Steal your resources and poop everywhere. Immediately, the first stage of your defense kicks in. The cells that survived the impact or are hurt or dying scream in panic, releasing an onslaught of chemical alarm signals that awaken your immune system. The first cells to show up are macrophages. If an average cell were the size of a human, a macrophage would be the size of a black rhino. A stoic cell, in principle, but you wouldn't want to annoy it. Bacteria do annoy them. Within seconds, the large cells attack and begin killing them without mercy. They stretch out parts. So yeah, and I'm glad that something like that, even though that's crazy looking and crazy sounding, I'm glad that like, you know, there's millions upon probably billions, trillions of those like little things living in my body. I'm glad as though we kind of preview things that, you know, there's something like out there like that, but it's still pretty cool because it's protecting me, you know what I'm saying? Killing them without mercy. They stretch out parts like the arms of an octopus and grab the bacteria to swallow them whole and digest them alive. A macrophage can eat 100 bacteria before it's exhausted. But there are too many enemies, so the macrophages call for reinforcements. In your blood, hundreds of thousands of neutrophils pick up their signals and move to the battlefield. Neutrophils are intense suicide warriors that only live to kill. They're so enthusiastic about killing that they kill themselves a few days after birth so they don't have time to accidentally destroy your body from the inside. 
As soon as neutrophils arrive, they begin vomiting deadly chemicals at bacteria or devour them. They are so careless in their attacks that they are causing real damage to your own. It's kind of crazy that something like this actually lives in our body or is produced by our body, something that can uh, harm our body at the same time. But it is a cool defense. So like if you think about it, it's, it's kind of like a uh, suicide bomber or like a grenade or something. I don't know what you call it. It's kind of they cool are though. so careless in their attacks that they are causing real damage to your own cells. But collateral damage is not their concern now or ever. Some neutrophils go so far to push their suicide button and explode, casting wide and toxic nets made from their own DNA filled with deadly chemicals that trap and kill bacteria. Sometimes they can continue fighting after that, even though they're sort of dead already. This is how much fun they have killing. While the battle rages, your blood vessels let fluid stream into the battlefield like a dam opening up towards a valley. You notice this as inflammation. Your thumb swells up a little and gets red and warm. So I'm thinking if if that's how it, you know that's how you know it's getting a little bit swollen and a little bit warm, as you know your body fighting it is whenever you're getting an infection, you're you're starting to get hot and you're really starting to swell up, and you know you might start going gangrene. That means there's like an overrun of. Uh, of um, bacteria like almost like there's like five to one almost in there just fighting like it's an overrun essentially is that what I'm thinking of, I'm getting is that what that means a little and gets red and warm the fluid brings a silent killer into the battle zone millions of complement proteins a sort of automated liquid weapon that stuns and kills bacteria by ripping holes into them we made a whole video explaining them in detail we're reaching a crossroad now if things go well, your first line of defense kills the invaders quickly. But sometimes, the enemies are too strong and would overwhelm your defenses eventually, which means certain death for you, the human. This is the hour of the dendritic cell, your immune system's intelligence officer. While your soldiers were bashing in heads, it was collecting samples by ripping back... Isn't it crazy just how almost imaginative your body is with how it protects itself and how it, um, you know, just how it, it just works, really. It's really cool to think about. The body is a really amazing thing. Just were bashing in heads. It was collecting samples by ripping bacteria into tiny parts and covering itself in it. Like a soldier decorating itself in the guts of a dead enemy. The cell leaves the battlefield and enters the superhighway of your immune system that connects all your tissues with your immune headquarters, your lymph nodes. The dendritic cell... I wonder if that's how uh, the black plague uh, sprayed and whenever it went to the, uh, the, blood, uh, the blood, which we call the blood vein and blood uh, system and stuff like that. It, is that how it got to the lymph nodes and all that? Your immune headquarters your lymph nodes. The dendritic cell coming from the battlefield is looking for a helper T cell, which is a sort of all-purpose commander cell within your immune army. But not any helper T cell, one that happens to have just the right weapon for the bacteria that infected your wound. So it goes around and rubs itself, still covered in bacteria parts, against every helper T cell it meets. Most T cells are a bit disgusted and not interested, but after a few hours, something clicks. A helper T cell recognizes the bacteria parts. This cell is the weapon that's needed right now. The dendritic cell is overjoyed and activates the helper T cell. Okay, wait. How come your immune system has a cell that has a weapon against the specific bacteria that infected you? Well... Can I make you think that, uh... Indigenous people are kind of missing that, do you think? Or those t those specific ones, anyway? It's, I guess maybe since they haven't been introduced to certain ones, that's why. The weapon against the specific bacteria that infected you. Well, your immune system has a perfect weapon against every possible disease in the universe. Against the Black Death, the coronavirus, or an infection that will emerge in 100 years on Mars. We'll talk about this a bit more in the next video because it's very complex. So for now, just know that you have billions of unique helper T-cells that each have weapons against every possible enemy. 
Yeah, I mean, you gotta imagine, this stuff probably takes for, like, days for him. Like, think about that little microbic thing trying to find one specific little cell in your entire body. That has to take days. ...weapons against every possible enemy. After the right T-cell is activated, your second line of defense awakes and rises like a teenager that needs to get up on a school day, very slowly. Your heavy weapons are incredibly effective, but they're not fast. The activated helper T-cell begins to clone itself over and over again. One becomes two, two become four, until there are thousands of them. Now they split into two groups. The first group quickly moves to help out your... It's crazy just how uh, large of an army you really have in your body. I mean, you know, some dictators would love this type of military. It's crazy. Now they split into two groups. The first group quickly moves to help out your soldiers. At the battlefield, things are getting out of hand. A tired macrophage is ready to give up. After fighting for days, it just wants to go to sleep, like many of its buddies have done already. But now the helper T-cells arrive. One of them comes to the tired macrophage and whispers something using special chemical signals. In a heartbeat, the demoralized soldier feels fresh again. But the I wonder if there's a medicine that can do the same thing that that does just in a quicker, you know, way so that we, you don't have to wait, you know, like two, a day to two days for that to, to happen for your body, to, for that to travel through your body. Feels fresh again. But there's something else. A hot, white anger. The macrophage knows what it needs to do. Kill. Invigorated, it throws itself against the enemies once again. All over the battlefield, this begins to happen. Meanwhile, the second group... And see, and this makes me feel like... Are, are the, I mean, obviously, they probably are. Are the cells working on, like, instinct? Or, you know, are they having, like... Are they knowing what they're doing? You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, and if they know what they're doing, it's kind of creepy that they're in our body. But, you know what I'm saying? It just kind of makes you think. Meanwhile, the second group of helper T cells was working on activating another line of defense, B cells, your antibody factories. Antibodies are protein superweapons that look like tiny crabs with two pincers to grab enemies. Just like the helper T cells, there are B cells in your body that are able to make just the right antibodies for every possible enemy. And the helper T cell is looking for exactly these B cells. After a day or two, the right B and again, you just gotta think, this is taking like days on top of days on top of days. That's just crazy to think about. That's why you get, that's why you have to have antibiotics and freaking medicine, neosporin, all that stuff. After a day or two, the right B cell is found and begins to clone itself. As soon as enough clones have been made, each B cell begins pumping out up to 2,000 antibodies per second. About a week after you injured yourself and bacteria invaded. And seeing by this time, I've already taken off a dang band aid and cut myself again, you know what I'm saying? So that's why you, you know. <laughs> About a week after you injured yourself and bacteria invaded, your second line of defense finally arrives in full force. The tiny army begins to saturate the battlefield, pinching and stunning desperate bacteria. The antibodies clump them together and make them unable to move or fight while your soldiers massacre the defenseless victims. The tide is turning fast. As the last enemies are cleaned up, your soldiers realize they are no longer needed and begin to kill themselves to save resources. But not all of them. A few helper T cells remain and turn into memory cells. They will guard the tissue for years, making sure the same bacteria will never again gain a foothold here. Similarly, a few B cells will stay alive and keep producing. And see, and I'm thinking, like, it, does anybody know if that's how, like, uh, like, vaccines work by introducing a new, uh, you know, virus or whatever inside you, but also with the antibodies in it? I'm thinking, I, I don't know how that works. I, I never, I just know that I've gotten it, so, and I'm fine, so I trust it. But in any case, um, I know that's a stupid way of thinking. That's kind of like a sheeple way to think. But still, you know, um, I'm thinking, is that how that works? A few B cells will stay alive and keep producing a low amount of antibodies, making you immune against this bacteria, maybe for the rest of your life. One day you wake up and notice that the wound has grown over and left nothing but a faint red mark. 
you were completely unaware of the drama your cells had to deal with. For you, the whole ordeal was a slight annoyance, while for millions of cells, it was a desperate fight for... That's the difference between our size and microbic, or microbic size, I guess you can say. It's just, you just don't know what's happening. Just like I'm sure a giant galaxy doesn't know anything's happening with our little tiny little Earth. And, and it's like, you, know, you know what I'm saying, giant galactical arm or whatever you want to call it. Oh, yeah. While for millions of cells, it was a desperate fight for life and death. But this is just the beginning of the epic story that unfolds inside you every day and is told in full in Immune, a journey into the mysterious. All right, guys, we'll go ahead and end it right there. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, another Chris video, definitely a, a good one. Um, obviously, a part of a part one of a series, I guess. With that being said, I guess we'll go ahead and, I mean, you already know how we do our Chris videos. Um, whenever they put them out, I'll try my best to do a reaction to it and, you know, stuff like that. Hopefully, um, he doesn't, you know, they don't mind or whatever. But with that being said, thank you guys for joining me on another episode of Micah's Intellectual Corner. Uh, please join me on my next episode. I don't, again, I don't know what I'm doing yet, but it'll come out when it comes out. I'll see you guys when I see you. I'm out. Peace.